stress so that my kids also learn to deal with anxiety and distress in an adaptive way, in a very healthy way. And that, that's another thing that parents need to pay attention. If we're just complaining, you know, complaints after complaints, you know, and then if we're just on the screen 24 seven, just eating and, and, and the negative thoughts after negative thoughts, if this is how we're trying to deal with anxiety, just remember that you're also modeling that to the kids, right? And the kids to need, need to learn very adaptive, helpful ways of dealing with anxiety. Those ways could be praying together as a family, you know, since mm -hmm. prayer has a big, a big role in, in, in the Egypt community. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, spending some family time together, you know, getting to hear each other, you know, spending some quality time with, with each family member. That can be another way of dealing with anxiety. Or kind of like being creative at home and do stuff together, you know, um, play together. There's a bunch of card games, you know, that, that parents and kids could play together. And also it could be, you know, watching some movies together, you know, kind of like trying to find more adaptive, healthy ways of dealing with anxiety and also modeling to the kids that, okay, when I'm stressed in life, when I'm anxious in life, these are some of the things that I can do. I can actually mm -hmm. talk to people because my parent is modeling me the same right now. I can actually look for social support because my parents are being my social support in the present moment. So instead of keeping it for myself and I saw it in myself and be on the screen, there are actually more adaptive, healthy ways of dealing with, with anxiety. So I think as parents, we're gonna be doing a lot of modeling during this time. So, so is it safe to say that um, the effects of the social distancing and the effects of the times right now, that it'll be a lasting impact on this generation or the next? Yes, I would, say, I would say it depends on how we, 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 we deal with it. I mean, if we deal, mm -hmm. with, if we deal with the situation in a healthy way mm -hmm. um, by relying more on social support, by connecting yeah. with, with one another, by being each other's you know, support system, then the impact won't be last long. Yet. But if we're still trying to deal with it in a negative way, um, I think the impact will be last long. Um, it all depends on how are we dealing with this? How are we actually coping with this situation? Because some of the things that we do for immediate relief could actually yeah. cause long-term pain, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think it, it just depends on, you know, how we're, we're coping with it. That's a good point. Um, so let's kind of pivot to um, resources that may be available to people. Um, are you aware of or do you have any suggestions and if you don't have it now we can always provide it later but what are some resources people can access um, if they have pre-existing uh, mental need mental uh, wellness needs or um, if they're um, looking to just have resources to cope during this time mm -hmm. so the biggest resource at this point is if you could actually check with your counselor if been if you've been working with a counselor um, at this point, you may not be able to see that person, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in person, but people are kind of like moving towards telehealth. So you still could be able to continue to get help, but in a different way, you know, there's mm -hmm. like, you know, phone counseling, telephone counseling, yeah. uh, people are doing, you know, video uh, counseling services, you know, for people struggling with, with, with wellness issues in general. Um, mm -hmm. So I think if you have already a support system if you already have a clinician i think i would encourage you to contact that person and see mm -hmm. hey is there another way is there another alternative that we can continue to to, to work together right but that, that's number one I also see like in, you know in our community i think there is a lot of help coming from um from our spiritual connection you know um mm -hmm. see if you can get a uh, spiritual help and uh, see if you can talk to your spiritual father um, or, or, or case, you know, if, if you have a father that that you've been working with, that you've been um, visiting, I think it's time also to to do a uh, phone conversation, you know, with them to see, you know, to hear, to get a different perspective, right? So that, that's mm -hmm. another thing, so spiritual. But more importantly, I think friends could be helpful here. Um, this is a time where we need to rely on each other. This is a time that we need to kind of connect and bond with one another and help, help the most. So I think, see if you can identify one or two people that you could actually reach out to, you know, to get some help. So whenever you feel that you want to talk to people, who that one person or who that, you know, 
frame that you trust that you can call. So trying to I can do a little bit of reflection and identify that person that you can actually call anytime uh, to share whatever you're experiencing in life. Mm-hmm. Identify a family member that you can actually talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, if you're if you're at school, see if you can identify that friend you know from school. It, you know, see if you have if you can identify your call your coworker or your professor. You know, whatever help that you need. Uh, please, this is the time that you can actually reach out. And people are more than willing to help in most cases, you know. Yeah. We all are feeling the pain, you know, we all are struggling to cope with all of this. And then when someone reaches out to reach out to us for help, I think, you know, this is the time that we show that we love and care for that person. So definitely look for community support, spiritual support, family support, counseling, there's a lot of YouTube channels to talk about in you know, mental health, in mental illness. I think I would also, you know, look into into all of that. Um, but at the same time, I would be very careful from um, a lot of misinformation. You know, there is a bunch of information out there now saying do this and don't do that, and this is the best way to cope with it, and this is not the best way. People are sharing a lot of information. You just you don't, you don't need to take it take it all Mm -hmm. you you just need to kind of filter out what's best for me um how reliable this information is where is this information coming from um you know what's the risk behind this information so i think Mm -hmm. we also need to do a little bit of screening because we're getting a bunch of information at once and some of them are good and unfortunately some of them are not yeah i it's funny that you mentioned that because i was just thinking through um uh, all of the like WhatsApps, the Viber messages, and the different like platforms that share information. So the misinformation can really um, contribute to heightened emotions during this time. So making sure that folks are um, going to trusted resources like the CDC or uh, paying attention to like uh, uh, information from the World Health Organization, things that are being put out by them as well. Mm-hmm. So that that's I think that's very important um, managing that misinformation. Um, so we are also asking that people submit questions through Facebook Live. So please continue to submit your questions. Um, Dr. Aman is willing to answer live. So this is a great time to um, gather some information on how you can cope during these stressful times. Um, And Dr. Aman, if you could share a little more information on um, just mental wellness in the community in general, um, things that you've seen that are maybe uh, could, like resources, I know you mentioned resources before, but things that may be uh, specific to our community or any trends or things like that that you'd like to share just to f- inform the uh, attendees. Yeah. yeah, so I think, um, you know, during this time when, you know, we're all required to stay at home and we're not, you know, we can't really go out and, and interact with people. It's very tempting, you know, to stay in the bait, you know, for a long period of time. And and it's okay, you know, to to do it, you know, for for uh, a short period of time. But if this continues for a long time, and we're always staying at home in our beds, I think that could actually have a consequence on our on our mental health. So um, maybe I would encourage people to treat each day, you know, as a work day. You know, by that what I mean is, you know, just get up, uh, mm-hmm. you know, take a shower, get dressed up. You, you know, um, do the yeah. stuff that you normally would do, except that you're staying at home and you're not going outside, mm-hmm. you know. That way you, you, you're training your mind that you're still making sense out of the situation. You're still trying to cope with it in a very healthy way. Um, if you're physically bored, mentally bored, emotionally mm-hmm. exhausted, and and you're not interested in trying out stuff, that that's not going to be helpful for your mental wellness. So I think trading as if that you're going to work, making sure that you take the steps, get up, do you do do your uh, breakfast and you know, dressed, um, take a shower, and all the things that you do, so that I think your brain used to you know getting those good vibes and feelings every day before this whole whole thing is introduced, right? So I think yeah. you know getting into that routine would be would be very helpful. Um, you know the world is very unpredictable. You know, what we see in the news is very unpredictable. We don't even know what's going to happen. But trying to have a very predictable schedule in your, in your yeah. own house would really be helpful. You know, what am I going to do today? Um, how am I going to spend, you know, my day? 
so try to have like a schedule so that you still feel like you're in control when it comes to what's going on in your house. You don't have any control what's going on outside, right? But you can mm -hmm. still have, have some control, you know, in in, in your own house. So I think those are the two things that I very much in, encourage people to try out on a, on on, um, on a daily basis. And also, I think it's okay to you know to feel anxious about things. I, I think. Mm -hmm we sometimes blame ourselves you know, for being anxious about this whole situation. So I say it's a normal reaction. It's our normal response. When you don't feel like you have, we, we're losing control over things. When we feel like um, we don't really know what tomorrow is gonna look like, we feel anxious and that's part of who we are. You know, that's just part of being human. So I think yeah. being okay with that and, and when you feel anxious and you don't have to blame yourself, you don't, you don't just need to accept it and say, hey, it's okay to be anxious. This is mm -hmm. anxiety provoking. And, and part of it is like to sit and process that, that anxiety provoking um, stimuli or information. So, you know, giving yourself a permission to feel anxious, um, you know, uh, getting dressed, doing your, your routines, mm -hmm trying to take the positive out of the situation in the present moment. You don't have to always think about the bad stuff that's going yes. on. See if you can actually make some positive sense, positive purpose out of out of this situation. That way you can still stay mentally fit during this um, during this situation. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's great advice. Um, we did have one question, but I think that throughout um, what you, you what answered you so the question was how do you deal with uncertainty of how long this will last and i think um you've touched on that um and managing the stress and anxiety that comes along with it uh mm -hmm. so another question that we have what are some tips for not getting bogged down by the lack of uncertainty on when restrictions will end mm -hmm. so kind of similar but yeah. it's, it's, it's very similar yes um i think in situations that i like this the base the base approach would be uh to be fully in the present. I yeah. think if we actually, you know, allow ourselves to be in the present, that actually would give our mind a break from worrying too much mm -hmm. about, about the future. Sometimes I think we go back and forth between the past and mm -hmm. the future, and yeah. we forget to live in the present moment, which is very, very unfortunate. You know, we're always like trying to think what's what's next, you know, what's coming tomorrow, or, I should have done this and, you know should have i should have approached it that way so we're either in the past or in the future we actually forget to live in the present moment so i think maybe practicing that self-awareness and say how can i live this moment to the fullest given yeah. the situation given the circumstance what can i what can i do you know how can i make the best sense out of this present situation that could actually mean that could involve giving yourself a break from thinking about the future that could actually involve giving yourself, you know, uh, being trapped in the past. So mm -hmm. maybe trying to practice that would actually be be helpful. Um, you will need to stay aware, constantly aware when you catch yourself going into the future, you need to drag yourself back into the present. If you see yourself going back into the past and worrying about some things that happened in the past, you could actually bring yourself back to the present. So there's a constant reflection, there's a constant awareness that needs to go on to in order to help you stay in the present, enjoy and make the best, not enjoy, at least make the best out of the present, out of this present moment. That's good. Um, so another question we have um, with the frantic, like uh, with the amount of people running out to grocery stores and doing all these kind of impulse spending and buying, mm -hmm. um, are there things that people should be um, mindful of when it comes to like diet during stressful times, um, whether they like eating poorly or not eating the best? Like what are things that people should be mindful of in terms of like diet and how that may affect like stress or anxiety? So the tendency of either eating too much or too little right you know you you know you get to see people kind of like going either to the left or the right um mm -hmm. i think the best recommendation would be to maintain the things that you've been doing before be, before the, the current the current situation so yes there is some stress uh we were buying stuff but i think trying to practice to limit yourself to the same eating pattern that you have been practicing you know before before this incident before the current situation um 
there is that impulse shopping need, you know, that you talked about, right? You go to the store, yeah. you buy stuff, and it's very tempting, you know, not to, not you know, not not to use all the stuff that we buy, you know, from the store. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, the rule of the thumb would be, hey, you know, how can I still maintain the feeding pattern that I've been practicing for a long time? I have this stuff for sure, uh, yeah. but what can I do today to contain, to maintain what? what the feeding pattern that I have been practicing, you know, for a long period of time. So I think if, I, I guess it takes back to the, um, it takes us back to that consistent awareness and reflection yes. and, and routine and structure at home. You know, if you have a structure at home about what I'm going to do today, what are some mm -hmm. of the things that I need to accomplish today, what am I going to cook, you know, how am I going to spend yeah. my day, you know, who am I, who am I, who am I going to call, you know, all the sorts of things, you know, you need, we need to have kind of structure that way, you know, we don't feel like, you know, um, we're, we're acting out of lack of control. We're actually acting based off of our ability to control and handle situations in life. So I think my best mm -hmm. advice would be, how can I actually keep in touch with my uh, feeding pattern and maintain that even in this kind of situation? Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's, that's very helpful. Um, so another question we have, um, any tips for folks who may have lost their jobs, be on furlough because of COVID-19? Um, the idea of like managing the dual anxiety of pandemic and the ability, inability to provide for themselves and their families. That really is, is very, very hard. Um, you know, you're dealing with one anxiety um, and you have another one, you know. Mm -hmm. You're losing anxiety. You're losing your job now. You're not being able to, you know, pay your bills. I could only imagine how hard that could be. Honestly, it's very, very hard. But I think my advice would be try to look for resources. You know, in the community, in the state. Um, they're talking about you know um, people losing jobs and people not having paychecks coming in. You know, wanting to give some relief. You know, from paying bills right away. Right. Then there are talks about you know, helping people who are actually going through similar situations like this. So I think my best advice would be, yes, it's painful. Yes, it's not the best thing to have, especially mm -hmm. during this uncertainty. Um, but see if you can actually reach out to the state and, 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 and connect with social workers. Um, see what resources they offer. Um, mm -hmm. That way you don't have to kind of like sit there and blame yourself and feel like you're trapped and you don't have any resource to cope with it. That's a worse feeling to have, you know, when you lose your job and you're very anxious about the current situation in general, the worst thing to do would be to sit alone, get frustrated about the whole world, yeah. um, isolate yourself and try to cope with it in a very maladaptive way. That is not gonna be helpful. What's helpful is definitely there is some pain feel that pain i'm not going to say don't feel any pain it's painful mm -hmm. it's a painful yeah. experience we need to allow ourselves to feel some of that pain but we need to go beyond that we need to go beyond that and see what are some resources available out there for people who lost their jobs what are some resources available out there for people who are not able to pay their their bills um if i have a mortgage you know what are the resources available for someone who's not able to pay their mortgage mm -hmm. uh, electric water bills you know what are resources that i have um, so I think looking into those resources would be would be a short term a short term solution. I would I would focus on the short term for the solution first, and then work towards long term you know long term solution. Well, that was uh, very helpful. Um, I know that uh, with the the virus, it's definitely again has d disrupted a lot of people's lives. Um, so people are not uh, in routine anymore. Um, they may not be going to work or they may not be working at all. So it's definitely take, making having a, a lasting impact on the community. Um, so it's this was very helpful. Um, I think a couple of things that are our takeaways is one, um, at least from the discussion, uh, one was to manage the information and take um, set times and boundaries on how much and what and what you're taking in, which I think is super helpful. Um, two, um, it's okay to not be okay, like feel, the, feel it, but then also go beyond it, as you mentioned just now. Um, and then also, um, and then three, in, in the idea of social distancing, physically distance yourself um, to protect yourself, but 
do not isolate yourself and find ways to connect with family, friends, um, virtually or through other resources. Mm -hmm. um, so I think these are all tips and things that people can uh, integrate in, into their everyday lives from here on out if they haven't already. Um, so I'm really excited to see um, how these tips may um, help certain folks. Um, we did get a question, um, and I just wanted to address it. We will definitely be doing another session in Amharic. Um, this is just to uh, do an English session first, and then we'll also do an Amharic session uh, again in the coming days. Um, so, Dr. Aman, we really appreciated um, the session. Uh, I think uh, we'll also want to provide any resources that you may have, um, as well as your Facebook group, um, so people can have access to that. I think that's a... a an excellent resource uh, to just information on mental wellness in general um, and mental health in our community. Um, so I don't think we have any other questions. Maybe we can give it like another minute or so, but um, other than that, um, we, I really appreciated the session. It was very information helpful for me too, because there are certain things that I need to incorporate, <laughs> um, setting boundaries for like work and things like that. So this is very helpful. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I really hope that we do another, you know, another segment in Amharic so that we can reach out more people and answer yes. the questions they have. Um, so we're, you know, at least we're just focusing some population here, but, you know, looking forward, I think the next week we could also do another yeah. one um, in Amharic. So yeah. I, w I want people to know that. So. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I really hope that people really try to get on track and do the normal things that they have been doing despite, you know, this abnormal situation, you know, get up, get dressed, you know, stay on schedule, schedule your things for the day, try to, to actually, you know, make sense out of all of this, all of the mess that we're actually. Yes, experiencing. yes, and we're all collectively going through it, so Absolutely. good to know that we all can do this together. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I think that is the end. Okay. Um, thank you again, and thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Um, please stay tuned for further programming. We'll also do another session on Hark, um, so be on the lookout for that as well. Thank you.